Well, uh, thank you, Emily. I want to start by thanking Atlantic Media and Emily and Ron and Steve for very artfully and in Steve's case, somewhat irreverently uh, facilitating a very rich conversation today about uh, confronting the skills gap. I just uh, hope that the debate later on tonight is as substantive as the conversation that we've had today in this room. Um, as we've heard, I think, in the discussion today, this sort of the problem of confronting the skills gap is actually quite complex one. Um, it's got a number of uh, dynamic challenges uh, and issues as well as opportunities. They, those include you know, the issues of a changing demographic, changes in technology and innovation and educational systems and in the workforce itself. And one issue that we think about um, and perhaps more importantly care deeply about at Pearson is what can we collectively do to try to um, narrow the gap in education, employment, or education, and employability? And so that far more people than our three panelists today um, can find a, a, a path to a better life through learning. So I think that's a very good segue to this next session, which is to sort of bring the conversation to a very personal level um, with three students who I'm very happy have joined us. Uh, they are all making their way through the educational system to a rapidly changing workforce in their own paths to a better life. Um, and we've talked about students today. I think it's very important that we hear from them directly. We even talked about uh, sort of wondering what's, what are sort of millennial attitudes, et cetera. So I think this is a, uh, I think a fitting end to the conversation that we've had today. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're the stakeholders that matter the most, and I'm excited to be able to share a panel with them. So I'm uh, delighted to be joined today by uh, Deanna Irby, who's a student at the College of Southern Nevada, uh, Frank Damewood, who's a father of five children, several of which are here today, including a son, Trey, who's sitting by my colleague, she'll be there. Uh, and uh, he's preparing himself for a new career also at the College of Southern Nevada, uh, and Mary McDonough, student at UNLV. So I'm going to start by uh, asking Frank a couple of questions. Frank, I, you know, I, I, I certainly won't presume to know all of it, but I think you've got a pretty incredible story as you've taken what sound like very brave steps to uh, make a career change. And maybe the best way to illustrate that with the audience today is, is to really ask us to tell you about sort of a, a day in the life, meaning, you know, what, what was your life like today? Because I think that will probably shine a light on what it is over time. Uh, and tell us about what you did today before joining us on stage. Well, just like most of you, I, I got up in the morning, got ready to go, did my job, um, turned around and rushed to go pick up my children from school. Uh, I do work at various different job sites, so sometimes uh, my start time and my end time do change, so it makes it very challenging uh, to suit my children's needs the best um, but in the end you know, I, I get to where I need to go and I grab them turn around drove down here as please I could to get here on time so right, tell us about your work school balance that's a work life balance right? tell, how, how does how does education fit into that well my education is more of an on on the job training um, I and sheet metal work at local 88. Um, so I learn in school at night and around and go home, go work the next morning and try to apply what I've learned, uh, grow myself, my career, as best I can. It's, a, it's an incredible juggling act you're uh, pulling off. Um, Deanna, I understand you came out of a, a virtual school experience, and, and I, I'd like to ask for you to tell us a bit about that and how well you feel that talk today about school preparation for college. I'd like to hear how well you think that prepared you for college experience. Well, as a fourth grader, I had 
experienced a lot of strange things in a lot of elementary schools in the Clark County School District that I went to. And some of them were not teaching enough, some were teaching too fast, and then we considered Nevada Connections Academy, which was the online school that I wound up being in for seven more years. It was quite a good school for me as a child, but as I'm now an adult trying to have a college life, I realize how many skills it actually gave me. I have an, what can be considered an extreme requirement for a work field that I hope to go into, which is medical transcription, and they expect about 70 words per minute to be able to be typed, and because I've spent seven years of my educational life learning how to type, how to use computers, I already know all of these skills, and I'm at 90 words per minute because I'm so used to typing and communicating through that. Um, I've also learned so much about online courses, and as the world progresses, online courses are a very common thing, even in college life. Um, I'm taking multiple online courses as well as in-person classes. And my online courses, they had a pre-course to prepare you for online coursing because they assume that it's a very different thing from classroom settings. And it really isn't. I adapted to the classroom setting very easily. However, this small course that I took on online courses was so mundane because I had already been in online coursing for so long. To take notes as though I was in a course watching a video or reading on my own. It's not very different at all. There is no difference that a lot of people are afraid of going into online schooling. Thank you. Terrific. So Mary, I understand that you work uh, closely with first year students and freshmen at UNLV. So can you tell us a bit about what you do with them and, and, and Beyond that, sort of what you're seeing from them. So, what, what do you what do you think their expectations are uh, from their student experience at UNLV, and and is it any different than yours? You know, how can you maybe contrast what your your expectations of your student experience was from what you see more generally about freshman class that that probably is at least three or four years separate. Roughly. Yep. Um, sure. So I sort of have two hats in working with first year students. Um, I am a peer instructor for the first year seminar classes in the Honors College. Um, so we work to teach things like study skills, um, how to build a resume, that kind of thing. Um, and then I'm also a mentor for first year students. So I have 10 to 11 students that I help um, with sort of the logistics of navigating college. So uh, one big concern at UNLV is finding parking. So uh, I kind of help out with that, that sort of thing. Um, I think in terms of expectations, this generation that has come into college um, has very high expectations. So I talk to a lot of students who are very concerned because they feel like, you know, I'm not uh, getting the college experience that I see, you know, in the movies or on TV and, and I'm not living up to that. Um, and I think in talking about the workforce, that same kind of idea applies. Um, I have a lot of exploring majors in my class, and so they don't quite know um, what career field they want to get into. And so a lot of them sort of have this expectation that their career is going to be kind of this end-all, be-all source of fulfillment, um, and that they won't really have, you know, an outside life um, aside from that. And so that makes, you know, major exploration and career exploration very hard. Um, in terms of my sort of your, your personal, ex your personal right, expectations right. and experience, yeah. Um, so I am a biology major, um, and I actually also attended the same school that Deanna went to, um, and I picked biology uh, just because I have an interest in it, and by going to a virtual high school, it sort of allowed me this flexibility to um, explore majors and explore you know, college and different career paths without the constraints of a physical classroom and sort of that schedule. So uh, I was working in a research lab what, you know, my whole senior year of high school and um, that sort of thing. So going into college, I had you know, a little bit more of a realistic expectation and kind of knew what to expect, so. Excellent. So I'm gonna finish off with a handful of, of questions. We'd like to have sort of a bit of a rapid fire on this. So uh, we'd like to sort of go up and down on a handful of questions. So the first one is, um, what challenges or barriers have you faced and how do you overcome them? Let's start on this end, uh, Mary. So, and just anything that might come to mind, pop to your mind about any 
challenges and barriers you faced as a student and how you overcame them? Sure. Um, Could be parking. Okay, okay. Yes, parking is a huge issue. Um, I think another issue is, I mentioned I'm a biology major, um, and my plan is to attend medical school, and we talked a little bit about this back in the green room, but um, my sort of biology curriculum isn't giving me a lot of um, practical skills that I would get in med school. Um, so our pre-med advisor kind of tells us, you know, when you graduate here, you can dump all the knowledge you've learned from biology and, you know, start fresh in medical school. So that's been a challenge. Excellent, thanks. So, uh, Frank, how about for you? I mean, what are the, what challenges have you encountered and how did you get through them? Um, some of the challenges that I've encountered uh, is just instructors willing to go above and beyond. Um, I did do traditional college. It took me 10 years to gain my bachelor's degree in business accounting. And it, it didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go. And it wasn't suitable for my family. Um, so that's why I chose to go the route that I do with a, with a trade school. Um, so that really is my biggest challenge is, you know, instructors not working well with, with some students. And that's why I, I went the that's way. That's why you made a change. Good. Deanna, how about you? Um, my biggest challenge currently in my college life was when I was in online schooling, I had adapted to accomplishing groups of things at a time, such as multiple lessons in this one subject one day and a different subject the next day. And I actually don't have enough work in my college classes to keep up that schedule, so I have to adjust to myself to a completely different schedule of alternating, but I'm in a way ahead of the green that I need to be in. So it's easier to t st take a step back than it is to take a step ahead. Excellent, thanks. I'm gonna ask you one more quick question in closing. Um, what advice would you give to the candidates tonight, if you could? You start maybe on down that end, Deanna. Um, I think from an educational hey. standpoint and for young people, not to think that we are helpless. We are in charge of our own lives. We know that. We're not asking it to be handed to us. We just would like some assistance in what we're trying to do and to uh, be allowed to do what we want to do with our lives. Great, thank you. Frank? I just want educators to, to understand that, you know, I'm in my 30s and still trying to better myself. And there are times where I am tired and I do come to class after taking care of five children. And there are times that I might not stay awake the entire time, and I apologize. But I, I just wish you all, you would be sympathetic towards the, the working parent trying to better himself and his children's lives. Thanks, Frank. So, Mary, your advice to this room of educational leaders or our, our uh, candidates tonight? Sure. Um, I think just to embrace the idea of educational diversity. Um, you know, there is no one path that is perfect for um, you know, a big group of people. So for me, online education worked well, um, may not work well for others. So I think just um, sort of having the opportunity to embrace that is really important. Excellent. Thank you. So could you join me in uh, thanking these uh, student panelists for joining us today?